Hello, everyone. My name is Manola Spinarolakis, the founder and creator of Reality Crowd TV, and welcome to episode 20 of Reality Crowd TV's Crowdfunding Hangouts. Today, we have a real estate crowdfunding themed episode, and our featured platform is patchofland.com, a real estate crowdfunding platform focused on debt financing. I'd like to introduce our, uh, our host and the CEO of Reality Crowd TV. Please say hello, uh, Jessica, to the audience. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our show tonight. As always, we appreciate everyone that follows and watches us, and hopefully you, you learned something great tonight. Excellent. Thank you, Jessica. And, of course, I'd like to introduce uh, to you our, our featured guest, but, but before we go there, just let me share some ground rules with the Hangout. Currently, if you follow the circle of Reality Crowd TV on Google+, you will be able to engage in a question and answer period during our show, which is done directly through the Google Plus event. So if you follow the page of Reality Crowd TV, you can actually ask questions during the event, and we will be able to either answer the questions, and, uh, and Carlo will also be able to answer the question as well. Uh, the event is always archived on YouTube after the fact, so you could watch this uh, episode at, as soon as we're finished. So without further ado, I would love to introduce uh, to you the CEO of Patch of Land, Carlo uh, Tabibi. Pleasure to meet you, Carlo. Hi, Manolis. How are you? Thank you for letting me on the show today. Thank you, and Jessica, actually. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, I hope to be able to answer any questions for you. Excellent. Yes. And, um, you know, uh, give us a little bit of introduction about yourself and, uh, and a brief introduction of patchofland.com uh, for us uh, so that the viewers can know um, exactly what your real estate crowdfunding platform does. Sure, sure, sure. So I'm Carlo Tabibi. I'm the CEO of Patch of Land. I've uh, been involved in real estate for over 20 years now. I've been doing a bit of hard money lending as well on the side for the last few years. Um, I've also started a few successful technology companies, and, and I really started out investing in technology companies, and a few years in I realized it's, it's much more fun starting your own company and really being involved from the ground up. Um, I've been involved in tech and e-commerce, uh, uh, many different companies, but I'm still partners in those companies today. In terms of real estate, I've done over $100 million in deals, uh, buying, selling, leasing. I've done a lot of property managing, and so I really know where all the pitfalls are when it comes to these kinds of deals. Um, I've even done deals in multiple states and even internationally. So that's a little bit about myself. In terms of the company Patch of Land, we're a crowdfunding real estate portal. And what that really means is we bring uh, accredited investors, and they have to be accredited, we'll explain that in a minute, but we bring accredited investors together uh, to pool their money to invest in deals that we find uh, uh, that might be, be interesting for our investor base. So what we do is we bring on developers that, that we get to underwrite, and um, I'll, a bit, I'll tell you a bit more about that in a minute when you ask me some more questions, but we basically bring on deals hard money lending deals uh, in the real estate space. Wonderful. Uh, and and this, is, this is incredible because you're essentially utilizing uh, new rules that came about as a result of the 2012 Jobs Act, which was signed into law by the President, uh, the Senate, and Congress. And, and these new laws are essentially taking the, the success of the um, donation slash reward-based crowdfunding model and they're allowing for the actual contribution in exchange for equity in a corporation or in, in a real estate corporation or lending them uh, capital in the form of debt. So the, the success of the donation rewards-based model has necessitated uh, the government to take notice, and now these new laws are allowing companies like yourself to actually obtain capital online for real estate deals directly through the internet and it's an amazing uh, amazing uh, disruption and uh, to this end do you think uh, it'd, it'd be best for us to show you the video uh, of Patch of Land so that people can understand it a little bit better? Well that would be great Manolis. Okay perfect so I'm gonna play the video that we have and uh, just bear with me everybody. Let's share my screen here and we'll pop it right up. Alrighty. All right, so everyone sees my screen currently, correct? Yep. Okay, here we go. Investing in real estate can often feel like a VIP club, where only a few are allowed entrance. Those in the know find the best deals and make back a huge ROI on their investments. It's no secret that real estate investment is one of the best ways to create passive income that really works, but only if you have real insider info. 
Plus, you often need to have a huge amount of capital to really get in on a good deal. Patch of Land is doing things differently. We're opening the doors to all accredited investors interested in real estate investments and pooling our money and resources to fund the best development deals with a low minimum commitment. This means a lowered risk for our investors because you can diversify into multiple deals. We've taken all the hard work out of real estate investing and automated the process. So even an accredited investor with relatively limited knowledge of real estate investment can use our service. It's as simple as looking through our portfolio of projects and finding the one that fits your needs, then signing the documents online. Our team of real estate professionals with 20 plus years of experience goes to work for you, vetting developers and doing the work of due diligence and deal analysis. We believe in trust and transparency. So we put that documentation at your fingertips so you can review the deal terms, the project, the local market, and the developer. Our due diligence is yours to review anytime. So you can feel confident, as we do, that all the projects have been carefully curated and are the cream of the crop. With Patch of Land, you connect with hundreds of developers seeking capital for their projects. We're so confident in our project portfolio that we underwrite and co-invest in these deals to get you the best rates. Patch of Land issues short-term, high-interest rate loans to real estate developers secured by the underlying real estate asset and pass those rates on to you with rates that are better than banks, bonds, and even equity markets in some circumstances. Watch your money grow 24-7 through our online dashboard. We keep everything transparent so you can see important data related to your investment. It takes as little as 10 minutes to start investing with us. Sign up today with Patch of Land and get in the know in real estate investment. Excellent. That was a great, that's a great video, Carlo. For me, it answered, you know, a lot of questions. Like if someone saw that for the first time, uh, it answers a lot of questions and it tells a lot of the benefits that your platform has. So that, that was a, a masterful job on that video. Thank you very much. It was my marketing officer that did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, we know her, uh, you know, at Apia Dierico, she's, a, she, she's amazing. She's a great person. Uh, so yes, uh, so let me, um, let's go actually to, um, to some of the questions we have for you so that we can actually uh, talk about what we saw in the video. Uh, so in the video, we, we noted that everything is online, and um, what, what I'd like to ask you is, can you kind of clarify what type of crowdfunding exactly are you engaging in? Are you, you mentioned earlier that it was accredited investor crowdfunding. And uh, for the audience, an accredited investor is an individual who makes $200,000 a year or is worth a million in net worth excluding their personal residence. Uh, so can you please explain what, uh, what provision of the Jobs Act your company is operating under? Sure. So far, we're operating under what's classified as Title II or 506C. It allows for general solicitation of our platform to the, the, the general population, but only accredited investors are allowed to invest on the platform. That's basically Congress telling us, hey, do what you're doing, but don't go after the skies with le less amounts of money, because if something goes wrong on the platform, if, if, if one of these platforms ends up being a bad guy, they don't want these little guys to lose their money. So they're saying, go after the, the wealthier guys for now, prove your platform, prove who you are, uh, and, and hopefully someday they'll open up new regulations, as you know, that's coming to us. So um, Title II, crowdfunding, 5060. Wonderful. Um, yes, and, and I know, that, uh, I, I know that, that that's a huge change in itself. I mean, uh, to, just to give people an idea, there's about 8.7 million accredited investors in the United States and the vast majority of those individuals are not investing in private companies. So the fact that you're able to now generally solicit to this 8.7 million population uh, will hopefully spur small business growth, uh, you know, especially in the real estate industry. Uh, so, so that's great that you guys are operating under that particular provision. Yeah, like you said, there's a, there's a lot of accredited investors for us to go after today. Uh, we're talking to a few different people that will bring us more accredited investors. We can also obviously go after institutional investors at the same time. So, so we're trying to bring all the money together onto the platform. I guess, Carlo, just for the audience sake, can you just give a quick definition of what an accredited investor is so they know? 
Sure, an accredited investor is someone who individually makes two hundred thousand dollars a year. If they're married, uh, they have to make three hundred thousand dollars a year jointly, or they have to have a million dollars of net assets excluding their home. And by net, that's obviously net of the loans that one may have. Hopefully soon, though, as you know, I mean, and maybe it's one of the questions that's coming, Manolis, but um, Title Three and Title Four are coming down the pipe, and so. Uh, do you want me to go there with those answers right now? And actually, that let's do that. But let me first bring up a question that asks exactly that, so we can answer this question at the same time. So that was great timing. Uh, is there an option now or upcoming that will allow for non-accredited investors uh, beyond Title Three or Regulation A plus? So Frank uh, Frank Spalding is the founder of CrowdFoundMe.com. Uh, that is a crowdfunding uh, magazine, and he's really doing some great things there. So yeah, so tell us, tell us about uh, Carl. Tell us about uh, Title Three and Title Four, which are two provisions that are currently being um, number one. One is being finalized; the other one is also being finalized too. So give us, give us your thoughts on that. Sure. So hi, Frank. How are you doing? Thanks for the question. Um, in terms of Title Three. Boy, that's 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 one that's been up in the air. It's been back and forth in Congress a few times. Um, they're really they really stumbled on this one, should we call it out there in Washington? Uh, so, will it come out? I, I, I've heard different opposing opinions of of, of where the, the Title Three is going to go. Um, I, I've heard that they might just jump to Title Four, and really that's the one I'm going to talk about because even if they did come out with Title Three, it's Title Four, the whole Reg A plus, it's called. Um, that will allow companies such as mine and other companies in the crowdfunding space to uh, uh, raise more money, quicker money. Um, there's less limitations to Title IV. I've heard from varying lawyers in the space um, that Title IV should be out July, August, September timeframe, um, and fingers crossed that happens. If that does happen, then companies such as mine will not only have to go after or be able to go after accredited investors, but we'll be able to go after the general population. And that's a lot of money sitting in bank accounts, earning close to pennies today. Um, so, you know, if, if those guys now have the opportunity to invest in deals such as mine or in other equity based crowdfunding opportunities that are out there on the internet, it'll really bring. It's, it's almost like bringing Wall Street to the masses when that happened, when, when uh, 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 trading opened up with E-Trade and they lowered the cost of the transaction. That's really what's happening here with crowdfunding. Um, people, companies, portals are bringing these opportunities that were previously unattainable. So by what I mean by unattainable, most people in the United States have not lent money to a real estate developer. Uh, let's just say 10% returns. Well, with a platform like mine, today accredited investors can invest in those deals and we'll show you a deal uh, uh, soon on our platform. But imagine when the general population, every Tom, Dick and Harry as they say, can invest $100, $200 of their money and, 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 and different savings accounts, etc., and they can earn 10% on their money. This is a windfall for the general population of the United States. It's going to be fantastic if, when, if and when it happens. Yes, I, uh, I I'm extremely excited for that too. And and I've I've heard a lot of things about the the Title III regulation, and there are a lot of uh, there is some negativity out there as far as the workability of the law. Uh, but but just to kind of share what that is. So Title III, they, they call it the crowdfunding exemption, where now. Uh, just to give a history lesson, in 1933, the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, which is the government regulatory body to protect investors, when the Great Depression happened and a lot of people lost their shirts, so to speak, they said that they put this law into place that said the only people who are able to invest in private companies are individuals who are accredited, the individuals who make $200,000 a year or are worth a million in net worth. So since 1933, those were the only people who were able to invest in these type of private companies. Now, with the internet and information at our fingertips, uh, there's a lot more things that, that we as a general public know and, and we could research and do our due diligence on in any company at any given time. 
that the government said, let's revisit that restriction that's been in place since 1933. And so Title III, uh, which, is, you know, which has brought a lot of excitement and a lot of uh, anticipation, is essentially lifting that requirement that you have to be accredited, and it's allowing you to actually you know, present as, as a developer or as a small business owner to actually go out and ask for funds through crowdfunding websites that would house your actual like campaign. So you, you would have to create, you know, uh, an offering document. You would have to do all these things that would ensure that you're in compliance with securities regulations. But it's essentially taking that 8.7 million population of accredited and opening it up to the whole population in the U.S., which is over 300 million people. So as Carlo just mentioned, this is a huge opportunity to spur small business growth. Real estate stands to benefit, I think, the most because it's one of the most predictable assets with cash flow, rental income, and that's why real estate is going to be huge. But it's not just for real estate. It could be for other businesses too. And then Title IV, I'm just not that familiar with, but I do know that you're right. That title not only allows you to generally solicit accredited investors, but it does allow you to also gen generally solicit unaccredited. So for the audience here, we're, we're witnessing an amazing economic boom that's about to happen, and most people do not even do not even know what crowdfunding is. So you know, I'm really happy that Carl, you're here with your expertise because you can really share with with the audience uh, exactly what you just shared, which is what it is. And so, um, you know, it, would you actually like to do the demo to show us like the the deal on your platform? Well, let me just say something about what you said because it was very sure. interesting. Sure. You know, 1933, when the law was made, it was really an, a, a good old boys club, right? These guys made rules, but they were the only ones that could go out there and do the investing. And, and thanks to the internet, thanks to the proliferation of information across the internet, and easier access to education, and again, information across the internet, more people want access to deal flow. More people want access to funds. And... Um, I'm really happy this is happening, and like I said, it's going from an old boys club to an everyman's club, and that's really a win for the whole world, if you ask me. Uh, absolutely, it's uh, it's it's exciting. It's it's really exciting. So let's let's show them uh, our platform, and let's like you said, let's walk them through. We have a deal, everybody. We'll show you we'll show you our current our current offering that's on the platform. Um, so Patch of Land has been around for about seven and a half months now. Uh, I started it with, with uh, two partners of mine, uh, two brothers actually, Jason Fritton and Brian Fritton from Chicago. Um, came together, came to LA, and we started uh, off with one offering seven and a half months ago. It filled up really fast, and we knew we were in the right space. So um, it's been a fun ride so far. So as you can see, here's our homepage. And, uh, if it, Manolis has already checked in, and it's a very easy sign up for anybody that wants to uh, sign up. So you go ahead and click View Investments, and uh, when you get to that page, you'll see uh, the list of our offerings. It's very much like a, a Kickstarter-esque website where you've got these uh, boxes with different offerings, and as you scroll down, you can see all the different offerings that we have. We've done 13 to date. Um, three have been paid back. Those are the ones with the circles on them. The fully funded on the top left is the orange, and, and so far we've actually raised that. Uh, we just broke today. Breaking news here on uh, on uh, this episode is we just broke three million dollars of money raised from the crowd. So that's a big achievement for us. Right. Um, and so if you look on the top left, that's our most recent offering. And when you click on that, it's our new Brooklyn uh, multifamily rehab. That uh, I mean, I'll say it's a great deal here, um, and you can scroll down and slowly you see the different pictures from the property. We're really trying to make it so that all the information is out there for everybody to see. Um, you can see we raised one hundred and seventy-three thousand dollars just today. We launched this at eleven o'clock Pacific time. There you can see a brief investment summary of what's going on. Uh, again, you can see a brief overview of the, of the deal of how much we're looking to raise. On the right, you've got useful links. Again, on the right, again, you've got documents, the different documents that are in place for the deal um, for you to review. On the left there where it says valuation, what we like to do is we like to show everybody the, all the different valuation methods we've used. 
to um, calculate whether this deal makes sense. So as you can see, we have appraisal value. That's a third party appraisal company uh, that goes out there that's, that's got experience in that area of, of, of New York and knows how to value a property. They go in, they do a full walkthrough. We use the highest uh, form used in the appraisal uh, uh, industry to determine the valuation. Then you've got the loan to the purchase price, so you can see the price that the guy's paying, and 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 he's putting a, a big down payment on this on this property, which is great for all of our investors. I'll walk through some of the people what debt and equity means in a minute. You've got comparable values. You've got a Zillow estimate. Again, you've got a property overview of where it is, the remodeling that's going on, the borrower that's borrowing, and then on the bottom right there, you'll see the financials button. And this will walk you through the deal again, what your APR is. In this case, it's an 11% APR. It says with, an, with a 12-month term, we sign all of our loans with a 12-month term, although it might be a shorter duration, which is great because you get your money back um, quicker. <laughs> you've got a first lien position on, on the property. You've got a personal guarantee. Again, we tell you about the property. We tell you about the ARV and the LTV. This shows you where the money's going, the purchase price, the origination fees, the rehab dollars and all the other costs that are going in. You can even see there that um, the developer is contributing $204,000 of their own money against our $250,000. So um, it's, it's a very good uh, example of our deals. Again, you've got the valuation, a brief description of the uh, distribution methodology that we use. Um, you can click on timeline, but there's no point. It's, uh, I don't know if that's ready yet. No, it's not. It's coming soon. If you scroll to the top, Manolis, you'll see, or yeah, there you, you've got developer questions and updates. So um, as 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 we as more questions come in, there's a developer again. As more questions come in for the, for this rehab, we'll um, publicize them on the site, and then you'll see uh, there'll be a little red dot with questions, and the same thing with updates. So that's a little bit about our site. Wow, excellent! I I, I love how I love how user friendly it looks, and um. And that's why I wish I could invest right now, but I'm not an accredited investor, unfortunately. <laughs> soon to be, soon to be, I'm sure. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> it's great, and I mean, it has a lot of information on it. It's great that you guys can actually portray everything so everyone knows it's fully disclosed on what's going on right online. Well, so thank you, Jessica. You know what it is? If, if you think about the Internet, as I mean, what, what's created this Internet? It's, it's information, right? We're, we live in the information age. And so let's give these investors that want information. I mean, I don't want to just take people's money and not have them know what they're investing in. This isn't a blind pool. This is you get to choose what you want and you get all the information that you like. And we want to bring as much information as we can for you. We're actually building additional tools in place that will bring even more information than what you see on that, on that, on that website today. We've really designed it around an e-commerce platform because people understand how that works. So it's almost like I want to buy this loan and then I want to invest this much money into it. Couple of clicks and uh, you're checking out of your cart as we say and you get an email saying thank you for investing, you invested $5,000 and then we have a fantastic back end that allows our investors to track their money, the interest that they've earned, the money on the platform, the different deals. Every time we get an update from uh, our developers, we actually, again, more information for our investors, we pass that on uh, via email and on the website. Wow, that's great. That is great, and um, actually we do have a few more questions that just came in. Um, so Frank, uh, Frank Spalding again, uh, he asks, um, do, do the investors invest directly in the property or do they invest in the company itself and the company spreads the investment? So I, I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking are, are all the investors' investments pooled in one management unit or is it um, individual owners in, in the property itself? So the way the current model for online lending is, is working out there on the web um, is as follows. Rather than make an individual LLC that ends up costing a lot of money, so it would be hard to give these kinds of rates to our investors if we had to create a single LLC for every single investment. Instead what we're doing is we're creating an LLC that lends 
two developers. And then our investor base lends to the LLC. And for example, Frank, if you were investing in, in, in a deal, you would get back a note whereby your note is referenced to the notes that we made. What that's called in this space is called the borrower payment dependent note. So while you can't transfer or give 50 people a UCC1, as it's called in the space, or a first lien position on the property because it would cost too much and it would also create havoc if a situation occurred for a foreclosure where 50 investors were going after one borrower. Instead, what happens is Patch of Land operates as a security trustee. We have a fiduciary duty to our lenders that we will perform in their best interest to manage the property, to manage the loan, and to manage the borrower. So when, Frank, you make that investment, if you invest in deal one, in deal two, and deal three, you'll have three different notes. Those notes relate to loans one, two, and three. And um, if one was to go sour, we would manage that process for you, again, on behalf of potentially 50 or 100 other investors that are in the deal with you. And we'd go after the borrower for you and do everything that you would normally do, except because we're doing it for a large group of people, we become more efficient. So that's why we've structured it this way. And the entire peer-to-peer -peer space, um, the big boys out there, Lending Club and Prosper, use the same methodology. And we've actually followed on with that methodology after reviewing many times with different lawyers. Very good. That was, that was a thorough answer. And actually, an, another one from Frank, too. Let's just uh, get into his other question. Um, how are cash disbursements handled? Proof of the project or phase completion? Does the borrower just get everything up front and you pray that they're honest? Is there a third party inspection service involved? Wow, Frank, you have a lot of questions. So, uh, yes and no to some of those. So, depending on the deal, it will depend on. Uh, how much of the money is distributed. By way of example, we did one deal that was a large chunk of money for the loan. It was a $550,000 loan. Some of that was to go towards removal of a prior loan. Some of that was going towards new construction. And so we did a phase out payment. Um, we will sometimes allow pictures to happen. Yes, there is a third party appraisal on the initial appraisal. And then sometimes we will have a third party go out to the property, take additional pictures, do an additional write-up for us. Um, that's one example. We have another deal going on that's going to be coming live next week in New York at a 12% interest rate, I believe. It's another $550,000 loan. And so we're splitting that up into two payments of 275 and 275 because he wants to move quickly. So as soon as he shows receipts of the initial 275, shows again pictures, further improvements, etc., we will release the additional 275 to the borrower. That's on a house that's going to be worth $1.4 million. So our loan to after remodel value is about 40%, which is a, an extremely low number. Um, so to answer your questions, Frank, yes, there are appraisals. Yes, there are distributions done. No, the borrower doesn't get all of their money up front. Um, if there's an acquisition going on and it's a small rehab, meaning a small uh, uh, amount of remodeling going on, then yes, we'd, we'd pay for it. But usually the developers are also putting in money, which makes it very safe for our investors. Yes, and, and you know, another, just to add on top of that, you, you just mentioned this deal that, that you just said. 40% LTV, which means that, you know, the, the way that things are appraised is you have a property in perfect condition is 100% of after repair value. 40% of after repair value means you're getting a 60% discount to what it's going to be worth on the fair market after you make repairs to it. So that in itself is such a safeguard for any investor because even if the developer fails, you as patch of land would take over that property at that amazing price and you would make sure that all the investors get their money back and then some because it's just it's just such a great discount to the property value so that that, that kind of segues into a, into a, into a topic of 
of why patch of land is really focused on debt rather than equity. I'm assuming a lot of people are asking out there, and I know there are a lot of other there, there are a lot of other sites that are focused on equity. We really decided to focus on debt because of the safer nature of debt. Um, I've been involved, like I said, in real estate for a long time, and and I know what it means to buy a property, manage a property, fix a property, and uh, and then sell a property. And I've also been through two different downturns, so I see what happens when properties are high, and 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 and, and as you all remember in the uh, Great Recession, um, what happened to property values. So what 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 I decided to focus on was debt, and 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 what that means to our general investor base. For those that don't know, because I'm sure many of you do, um, in a default situation, the equity holder is the first person that's going to lose money. So if you invest in a property, and let's call it a a, a million dollar property, um, and you're the equity holder. If that property goes down in value and, and you're forced to sell, you're the equity holder. You're going to lose money. Now, let's use the example of, of, of my up-and-coming deal, uh, a $1.4 million property after remodel value. Okay, um, We're lending him $550,000. Well, that property, even if it went down in value 50%, our loan is still covered by the value of that property. There'd have to be another massive recession uh, for, for, for that loan to really take a hit. And so that's why if you focus on the first lien positions, which is what we've done, and then we also get personal guarantees from our developers, which allows for a much quicker resolution when you're dealing with, with, with debt. Um, there, there is something out there called non-recourse, which means you don't go after the borrower. But in all of our cases, we do go after the borrower, and uh, and 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 that's because I'm also invested in these deals with you. Great. Uh, Just, did, did you have a do you have a question about uh, do you have a question? Um, no, not based off that. But do you want to move on to another question, or did you want to add something to that? Yeah, just just to add to that too. Um, you know, as far as from the investor standpoint, too. I mean, um, we're we're going to get to the developer questions in a minute. Cause I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, you know, how how do they qualify? Like, how how do they get signed up? But just just to go from the investor perspective, um, you know, your site essentially brings people in, and they have to fill out a questionnaire to self-certify that they're accredited. What's what's to stop someone from saying they're accredited and then seeing the investments and wanting to invest. Do you have an extra layer of due diligence to verify accreditation after they've been able to see the investments? Yes, we allow everybody to see the investment because we think that's that's you know fair distribution of information. Um, and so investor comes in, signs up, they tell us they are accredited or not accredited. They have uh, they can choose from the two hundred thousand, the three hundred thousand, or the one million dollar accreditation. That'll just get you to be able to look at the website, right? You can see the deal flow, you can see what we're doing, you can sign up for our emails. Um, but once you decide to actually pull the trigger and invest, we'll um, go through an additional process. So you'll you'll make the investment, uh, click submit, sign the documents all electronically online, and then um, once you do make that investment, we'll send you an email going, please let us know how you would like to verify your uh, uh, accreditation, and so by 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 the Act of Congress, part of that accreditation requires us to get third party accreditation. So I can't do it, you can't do it, the investors can't. Well, you could be honest, but uh, the investors can't do it. Um, it would have to be a, a company that's out there that does this accreditation for us, and we have uh, a relationship with a few different firms. You can also. Uh, send a letter from a lawyer or a CPA with them verifying your accreditation. We've had a few of those come in. And so that, that's, yeah, there you go. Excellent. Okay. That, uh, I think that's it on the investor. And uh, I'll, I'll switch it over to you, Jess, for the next question. Can, can I just, sorry, before we, before we jump on. There sure. is, actually, now I'll let you move on to the developers because it actually does um, answer the question there too. Go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, so what kind of criteria do you have for developers? Do you go through some sort of process? 
Sure. And actually, Carlo, while you speak, I'm going to pull up the actual sign-up form. I think you have a developer sign-up form, right? Yeah, that would be great, actually, because then I can kind of walk everyone through how sure. it works. And so what we're really looking for are, are people that have done this before. They've got the experience of, of, of remodeling and buying and selling real estate. Um, while I'd love to be able to help everybody on the planet with their, with their dreams and aspirations of being a real estate developer, I have to protect my investors first and foremost. So you can see here, this is our application page, name, first name, last name, uh, some uh, contact information. Um, but what's really most important for me is who the developer is, what their experience is. Um, I, I really love working with uh, people that are in the real estate space. What I mean by that is real estate lawyers, brokers, real estate agents, real estate contractors, real estate insurance guys. Um, all these guys in the real estate space are really first and foremost my premier uh, kind of borrower because they have the knowledge and the information necessary to make sure that they buy the house properly or the property cheap and they know how to do a remodel. Um, we've had a lot of applications come in from people that really, oh great, this is free money from a crowdfunding site and it's really not that not that easy. I'll say we're easier than the banks um, and we're much quicker than the banks and we're much more transparent than the banks uh, which is great for our investors and our borrowers but we still have to make sure that the deals that we do are properly vetted by my team and myself included. Um, so like I said when they come to the platform they'll enter the information on the property they'll enter how much money they're putting down, they'll enter their approximate credit score. As you can see here is the property information request form. What are you going to do with the property? What do you think the property is going to be worth? Once we get that information, we will then review it, do a quick review. If we like what we see uh, in the database of, of what you've posted, then we'll contact the developer, we'll have a discussion with the developer, we'll see if the developer really knows what they're talking about. And um, if they do, we'll hope to be able to make a deal with them. Um, if they don't, we'll unfortunately have to pass on that one deal, but I'm sure there'll be many more to come. How long does this process normally take? So say you look at the application and you're like, and then after you speak with them, you, you approve it and you actually like the developer. How long does the process take to actually get them started and approved to work? So we could do a deal as quickly as two to three days. Um, most usually take seven to ten days because there's a lot of underwriting that goes on. Um, also depends on the loan to value. The, lower, the better the loan to value, the quicker we can move on a deal. Um, but we can move very quickly. Again, I think if you, if you look at the banking, banking industry and how slow they are to move, uh, uh, it's really like a, a race between a rabbit and a tortoise. Yeah, <laughs> uh, 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 we're much much faster. Great. Um, you know, I, I I love this question because I'm trying to figure out the answer to this too. This is uh, Zach Bob from Crowdfund Genius. How do you become an accredited investor? <laughs> <laughs> Work, hard. <laughs> Work hard. Work hard or marry rich is what my dad always told me. <laughs> yeah, Zach. Um, I I know you might have joined us late. Um. An accredited investor is an individual who makes $200,000 a year or is worth a million in net worth. So you have to become wealthy to be categorized as an uh, accredited investor. We're, we're, all, we're all trying, brother. We're there with you. <laughs> hey, if you crowdfund a great project, you can maybe be an accredited investor very quickly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and then we have another great question from, uh, from Frank. Uh, are you just focusing on fix and flip, or will you be doing any buy, buy and hold for long-term rental income, or are you leaving that to other companies? Uh, I have a similar background to you, by the way. Thank you for your excellent answers thus far, Carlo. Thank you, Frank. Appreciate it. Uh, feel free to call me anytime, by the way. <laughs> um, Frank, we've focused so far on the fix and flip market for uh, uh, multiple reasons, really. One is the... Um, smaller dollar volume of each loan, it's, it's easier to crowdfund. So if I put a $10 million deal on my platform, I'd never get it filled. Being able to do a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar deal is actually great for everybody involved, my company, the investor, and the developer. The reason is, from a developer's standpoint, they're able to get 
a nice amount of money to be able to do these deals. Like I said, a hundred to five hundred thousand dollars so far. From the investor standpoint, smaller deals actually have higher returns. Okay, our goal is to be able to bring thousands of these smaller deals um, with high yield, double digit return opportunities to our investor base. Um, again, the fix and flip market is a very special niche that we've focused on so far because of the short term nature of those loans. By way of example, even though we sign one year loans, um, some of the loans have actually been paid off in 90 days, um, with most expecting to go for a 180 to a 270 day range. Um, some will go full term, but the reason I like that space, again, for my investor base, and I come from that crowd as well, where I've been doing these deals for myself, it's almost like having liquid cash in your bank account, where you're earning 10, 12 percent, um, but that money's coming back to you. So if you thought about investing in multiple deals, right, where, by way of example, if you have $100,000 to invest, and you invest ten thousand or twenty thousand dollars into each deal every week or every other week or every other month or whatever the deal is, you you are getting paid back your principal over a short period of time in case of an emergency, in case somebody needs it. Whereas the longer term loans, they're great, they are good at, and, and we will go there too. Um, but I don't want to have my money locked up today for three to five years. Maybe in, in, in some, maybe I don't mind having some of my money locked up for a longer period of time, but I'm, I as an investor love the short term nature of our investments with these high yields. Look at the bond market, such low rates out there, you're locking your money up for so long, okay sure you can sell it off, but then you might make a loss on the uh, capital you put in there. So short term high yield for now Frank, uh, but we will be focusing on, on commercial too, we actually have a deal that we're looking at. Um, that's part residential, part commercial, so it's got retail on the bottom, and we're, we're working on those too. And as we grow, we'll go for bigger deals, um, but just to, for now, for my investor base, the smaller ones are easier to fill. Great, and um, that actually answers another question that popped up from uh, from Zach Bob. Uh, do you invest in commercial real estate or residential? That was answered both. You would do both there. Um, another, another actual, um, just to get more specific too, uh, na naturally, your experience as an investor yourself lends you to really analyze every deal that's submitted because you, you naturally have an obligation to your investors to present a great opportunity. So to, to go a little more detail into the criteria, do you want to see someone with a track record or if it's a great enough deal, you would accept someone doing their first deal? Uh, that's, a, that's a tough question, Manolis. I have to say track record is going to trump uh, from, from, from a starting point. However, track record with 100% financing or first deal with 25% financing, right? I'd probably take the 25% financing. So uh, it's, it's, it's a hard question to answer. I think it's going to depend on the location of the property, the amount of work that needs to go into a property. For example, uh, 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 Frank asked, will I be doing longer term lease and holds? Uh, yes, that's an example of a situation where maybe the developer doesn't need as much information, maybe they're buying the property as a second form source of income for themselves and there's, and there's a nice revenue return coming in off that property. So um, would I, like I said, it's a hard question to answer. Uh, 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 track record is very important for me today. I want those guys that, that know how to remodel a house. That's why contractors are great. I want the guy that knows the price of a house in a certain area. That's why the brokers, the real estate agents and the appraisal guys are great. I want a guy who knows how to cover, his, uh, uh, situa cover a certain situation. That's why real estate lawyers are great. Um, and, and, and that's why track record for me is so important. Great, and, um, and so th this leads us then to just general costs for the borrower and then general costs for the investors. Uh, when they use your platform, is there an upfront cost that, an, that a borrower would, uh, would incur in order to even list their property? And uh, you could say if there's an upfront cost, 
that your portal charges, but also share with us if there's some sort of legal things that they're going to need to get in order that you're, you're not going to charge them, but it's just going to be something that they're going to have to think about if they want to bring a deal. This is kind of a minimum chunk of change you should have in order to like prepare your deal for this type of uh, a crowdfunded investment. So um, fees to borrowers, so far we've not charged any for the application. Again, wow. because we can process a loan, well, we can process an application quite quickly and efficiently uh, because of the technology that we're implementing on the back end. Um, so when that developer comes in through that application, we're able to see all that information. We're able to gather the information on the property. We're able to see if that property even makes sense for us. So from an application standpoint, no, we don't charge anything to the borrower, which is great. Um, uh, from, from, from an investor standpoint, no, we don't charge them anything either. What they see on the website is the rate that they get, and there are no fees. Um, from Again, going, jumping back to the developer, the rates are going to vary um, by city and by state. Different laws have different lending rules, therefore it requires different risk to reward ratios. And so... Um, I, I, I couldn't quote here today our, 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 our fees other than maybe a range. I'll say it's you know two to five points, um, and eight to fifteen percent. Again, depending on the state. Unfortunately, certain states require higher rates because of the laws. Um, one thing that we haven't mentioned on, on this call today that I, I know your developers will love. Um, and I, I know your investors will love as well, Manolis, is, 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 is what we do here at Patch of Land, which differentiates us from everybody else out there in the crowdfunding space, is that we pre-fund our loans. So what that means is the following. A developer comes to our platform, fills out the application, we like it, we look at it, we like the deal, uh, uh, we've got the deal turned down, everything's okay. Patch of Land with our internal dollars will actually fund that developer's project prior to it going onto the platform. So again, that $550,000 deal I told you about, um, we reviewed it, we underwrote it, and we pre-funded it. And so from a developer standpoint, that means you've got your money, you're safe and secure. On a lot of other crowdfunding platforms, you'll have to wait to see if the deal funds. If it does fund, then you still have to wait even longer to um, get the paperwork ready and signed. Instead, if we like the deal, it's a done deal, it's going forward. Uh, we're actually in talks right now with two or three different developers that we're trying to close in the next couple of weeks, um, um, to, to, and we're going to be pre-funding them as well. What that means from an investor standpoint is the following. We at Patch of Land are putting our money in the deals before you're even seeing them. That shows that we've got skin in the game. If you like what I'm doing, you're welcome to take me out. You're welcome to backfill my, my investment, as we call it here. Um, so, or we post funds, should we call it. So again, that $550,000 investment, if you like it, you can buy a part of that loan from me. Um, and I'll give it to you at the rate that's on the, on the site, which is usually the rate that we're giving to the developer. And sometimes we'll take a 1.1% spread for the servicing fee of that loan. But basically, we're saying, Frank, you're still there. If you like our deals, you get to take that deal away from me, and I'm in that deal with you until other people take me out. If people take me out, if people like the deal so much, for example, the deal that we launched today that's $173,000 funded out of the $250,000, I'm still in that deal, but people obviously love that deal, so I'll be taken out at some point. That is a that is actually really beneficial for for both the investor and developer because number one the, the developer can close quickly so I mean you know I, obviously from a from a developer or operator or you know uh, someone who is bringing a real estate property to your platform they have a contract with an actual owner who's selling so they have a time restraint and you kind of help alleviate that restraint by pre-funding the deal so that they can close quickly so that's that's an amazing development there. Um, but let me let me actually ask this one. There's actually a great question by um, by Zach Bob, because before I before I realized 
that uh, th this whole Title II equity crowdfunding, the General Association of Accredited Investors, there's actually a great question here, and, and I was confused for a while until I realized the, like what, what was happening. So Zach is saying, wait, I'm confused now. Do you need to be an accredited investor or not in order to crowdfund a real estate purchase? So if, if you don't mind, let me try to actually answer that, and then you can jump in because this is the, this is the kind of what I came to. In order to invest in any Title II accredited investor, general solicitation of accredited investor offering, in order to invest, you have to be wealthy. But you as an entrepreneur can bring a deal to these websites and raise capital for your business. So whether it's a real estate deal, whether it's a small business deal, you as the entrepreneur can raise as much money as you want and you don't have to be an accredited investor to raise money. So there, there's two sides of the equation. You have the entrepreneur who does not have to be accredited to bring a deal to get funded, but as the investors in the deals that you're bringing to these platforms, the investors who are going to fund those deals have to be accredited under Title II equity crowdfunding. Uh, Carlo, did, did I explain that properly? Yeah, you got that. You got that spot on. I just one addition I'll make to that is the whole rule of crowdfunding was also made to bring more money to the general population for projects that they want to do. And a great example I'll say right now is Kickstarter and Indiegogo in that those are donation based crowdfunding and so it does operate differently. But look at the amount of businesses that have been developed and created thanks to these donations. Look at Oculus Rift being a perfect example or the Pebble Watch being another example or um, that movie Victoria something or other. These are movies, these are watches, these are uh, electronic devices that have been created thanks to crowdfunding and the people that started those had nothing to start with. They now are accredited investors but um, this opportunity of crowdfunding really is allowing on the one side investors to bring money to the other side which is a, a general population of int intelligent hard-working individuals that previously had a hard time raising money. The SEC had rules and, 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 and Wall Street has its rules and the banks have their rules and the angel investor groups and the venture capitalist groups they all have their rules. Well these rules are now being broken thanks to crowdfunding. Completely. It's completely disrupting the industry and, and just I'm going to ask you a, a very upfront question, Carlo, and, and this is going to apply to not only real estate, but you need people to submit deals, don't you? Like you're just waiting to fund more deals and you're waiting for people to just sign up. You need more deals. Is that correct? Yeah, sure. We're always looking for more deals. We're, a, we're like a loan origination platform. We're looking for deals, great deals. I'm not looking for bad deals here, Manolis. I've got bad deals on the platform all the time coming to me. I'm really looking for deals where developers are willing to put skin in the game. They, you know, they're having a hard time getting the loan from the bank. They want to move quickly. They want to see what I'm doing. They want to work with someone who has been in the real estate space. I'm a hardworking entrepreneur trying to make a living like you guys. And if there's people out there that have deals that need funding from a loan perspective, please come on down, come to the website, fill out the application, and uh, and we'll try to do a deal with you. Excellent, and I mean, um, I I know this too. I mean, it, it, when it's so early in the genesis of a new industry, I mean, crowdfunding is just a new way to raise capital, but it's a new industry. It it frankly is is an exciting time to be alive. Uh, if if you're an entrepreneur, if you're an investor who who wants to have great investments and be a passive investor, it's a great time to be invest to be an investor. Uh, it's it's just a great time to be alive, and and so. Entrepreneurs and real estate developers and everyone who's watching this show, funding portals right now need deals. If you have a dream out there, there's no reason why you should be putting all your ducks in a row, getting a good business plan together, getting quality deals in place and submitting them because right now is when deals need to be made. You need to help create jobs in America. And so these, this, this is why it's an amazing time because funds are available, but no one understands or no one really knows that much about crowdfunding yet. So if you bring great deals this early on, there's a good chance you're going to get funded. 
uh, well before the mainstream even understands what's about to happen in America. So, I, you know, I want to get that point across. Um, Carlo, um, and actually, Jess, w would you like to switch to our uh, our last set of questions, kind of like the, the future? Sure. I mean, I do have one, I guess, since we only have about six minutes left. So sure. for Carlo, so there's a lot of other real estate platforms out there, and obviously today you mentioned so many great things about Patch of Land. If you had one one thing to say of why people should use Patch of Land instead of, say, one of the other real estate platforms out there, what would you say it would be? I'd say the fact that we're focused on high-yield, short-term debt, uh, along with the fact that we're pre-funding those deals internally with our dollars, that's the reason you should be looking at our platform for your investments. Great. Awesome. Excellent. And I guess what... Do you, how do you see crowdfunding in the next five to ten years? What do you think is going to happen with this? Ooh, it's, you know, that's a hard question to answer, really. But if you if you said to the guys uh, who were uh, under the tree uh, back in London when they started creating the stock exchange, um, and and you asked them what's going to happen in the next hundred years in this in, in, with, with the stock market, God knows, right? No one would have thought there'd be electronic trading on the Nasdaq the way it is right now. Um, crowdfunding over the next five to ten years, it's a multi-billion-dollar industry. Um, it's going to be there very, very quickly. Uh, we're disrupting everything from uh, equity raising, debt raising, real estate. Uh, 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 you name it, we're disrupting it. Look at every other company out there. So how big is it going to be? Uh, I could see it being a trillion dollar industry very easily because everything at some point will start going through a crowdfunding portal. We're going to disrupt the banks. We're going to disrupt the brokerage houses. We're going to disrupt smart money even from the venture capital side. Um, and it's going to be very interesting to watch, and I'm really happy to be here on the ground floor. I'm sure everybody who's watching this today uh, is also going to be getting in early on the ground floor. You're going to have the opportunity to, to invest in, in projects and deals and platforms like no one ever else has before, and um, it's going to be a really interesting ride. Yes, and um, you know, just, just, to sh just to throw some statistics out there so people understand that this isn't just a fad, uh, back in 2009, globally, uh, crowdfunding raised a billion dollars in, 2000, uh, in 2009 in one year. Flash forward to 2013, at the end of this uh, most recent year, it was $5 billion a year raised in crowdfunding. That's like your hockey stick, right? You, you, if you look at a graph and you see the hockey stick, it's going up like that. The, the World Bank released a report in November of 2013 and they, and they said that in 20 years, crowdfunding at its current rate of, of growth is going to be a $90 billion a year industry. Um, a, a report from UC Berkeley College uh, that has one of the only crowdfunding um, programs in the nation that, that's actually at a university, uh, headed by Richard Swart, I, I believe there was a, a study done that the potential size in the U.S. alone, and it's going to take a long time for it to get to this point, but they just said potential of what it could be one day, is $300 billion is, is how much money can be raised through crowdfunding just in the U.S. alone. So these statistics, of course, we have to wait and see if they're going to come to fruition, but the real, you know, the, the real value is in what's actually happened from 2009 to 2013. So the fact of the matter is, if this is how capital is going to occur in the future, then people need to become educated in it so that they're not hurt uh, by just going into it blind. Uh, so it's important that people get educated. And uh, let, me, um, let me actually, uh, there's a few more questions here. Frank has, a, has an interesting um, strategic question for you, Carlo. Uh, will there be an affiliates platform made av available? Uh, referral fees for both investors and deals slash projects. So if someone brings an investor to you or a deal to you, is there some sort of an affiliate program where you would compensate that person? You know, we, we, wanted, to do, we wanted to do that, but um, there were certain rules around it, again, back to SEC and FINRA. So hopefully someday soon we'll be able to do a referral program both for developers and for investors. Currently we're not doing that, but... Um, Stay tuned, and it, it will happen once we have more uh, legal information on that. 
Great. And then one more question from uh, Zach Bob as well. Uh, Zach says, what if one landlord is selling a group of homes, say 20 or more, uh, so he can retire? Could you use patch of land to raise money in order to purchase all the homes collectively, or does it only work individually? So I'm, I, I think what Zach is trying to say here is, couldn't crowdfunding be an exit strategy for landlords? It could be an exit strategy for landlords. However, the problem there is you need an operator to be managing that property on behalf of the crowdfunding portal. So if you look at what we do as, as a company, we lend money, right? Well, we have to be lending it to somebody, right, that's going to manage that property on behalf of my lenders, shall we call it. So whether you look at it from as equity or as debt, there needs to be people in place that are going to manage that for you. One thing I say, in fact, I've had a deal like this come, come across our table where a, a, a guy wanted to sell the property that he had. I'm like, well, why would you sell it to me? If you can't sell it on the general marketplace, I'm not going to sell it to my investor base. Right? If you don't have a sponsor that's willing to buy it from you, right? There's got to be someone who's willing to buy it, and they're the ones who've got to be managing it. You know, um, Zach, you might have just came up with a brilliant business idea, though. If, if, if I were an agent or a brokerage, I would be trying to create like an MLS for uh, properties that sellers are willing to crowdfund. And then you just find operators and sponsors for them. That'd be a pretty cool matchmaking right there. Just use it as a selling strategy for, uh, you know, say to a landlord, hey, you're not having a good luck selling it traditionally. Would you be willing to sell it through crowdfunding? If they say yes, you could post it on a site. Suddenly you have all these operators, you know, scrolling the site to see that, hey, this is a crowdfundable opportunity. That'd be a pretty cool business right there. Very cool. I'm accredited, Zach. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so Zach, if you get into that, let me know. I might be interested in joining you on there. <laughs> but um, great. So, you know, we we've run out of time. Uh, so, everyone, thank you for joining us. Uh, so, Carlo, I'll, I'll give you the last word. Um, you, you know, tell us how we can get more information about Patch of Land if uh, if if one of our viewers wanted to come and check you guys out. Uh, go to patchofland.com, sign up, and we'll keep sending you emails and bug you a little bit with those emails if you want. Um, but no, really, Manolas, Jessica, thank you so much for, for letting me on the show uh, on Reality Crowd TV. It's been really fun, really great. Um, thank you so much. Our, uh, our pleasure. And, uh, and Jessica, you have, you have a last word? Uh, no, again, thank you, everyone, for joining. And I hope you got a lot of info. And if you have any more questions, feel free to email realitycrowdtv at gmail.com if you have any further questions, and we can help you get it answered. Great. And, um, and and just judging from the viewership on this episode, it was one of our better viewerships. I, I could see the numbers on the bottom. Uh, so we are planning to do more real estate related episodes in the future. Uh, and we're going to have Patch Land come back on as well for a couple more episodes in the near future. So uh, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Uh, until next time, dream it, believe it, achieve it. <laughs> have a good night now. Good night.